it's been a while since I last recorded a video and over the last few weeks since I've recorded and not read anything or thought about how I ought to read something so I have more to discuss at the end of the month, the more that I've thought about reading and recording, the more that this fear has built up within me that this can only go incredibly wrong. So, hello everyone, my name is Charlie and today I am just going to allow all of my words to burst forth from within me and hope that this can be cobbled together into some form of video. Yes, I have been gone for a few weeks and to many people that won't matter. Most of you will know that over the last four years on this platform, I have had the most erratic uploading schedule since the last series of Doctor Who. I wish it said Dracula, actually. Yeah, I've had the most erratic upload schedule since Dracula Season 3. Did anyone else watch that? <sighs> I was really happy with the winner, although... I have been following Eva Destruction's career for quite a long time, and so I was glad to see her on the show, but also ultimately thought that they became their own downfall, but I don't think there's any losers on that show really, they're all getting to share their talents on a platform such as Amazon Prime and Netflix now, I'm not sure which I'd prefer to promote really, they used to be on YouTube. And now, whilst I am uploading my videos here right now in this moment, I'm not sure whether we can even promote YouTube anymore, can we? I mean, a lot of shit has gone down since I last uploaded a video. And even then, it had this weird little line at the top of whatever it was when I was uploading. But I'm one of those people who always just click yes on a computer, not bothering to think. I am a complete technophobe. I don't read anything. I'm a terrible person. My friend Lindsay would probably hate the way I go about navigating my computer and all that. But I never bothered with it. And then people started bringing out videos. And I was like, oh, great. Is the sky falling? Or, you know, have we got a tricky little situation? And I'm not trying to belittle anyone else's responses to this weird thing about children and all that fun stuff, jazz, by Liza Minnelli. Um, but... It did leave me in a quandary in relation to the videos that I've been releasing this month. As many of you know, following this channel, again, I have been doing the Believeathon that is run by Gavin of Gavin Hetherington. It's about reading middle grade fiction. And, you know, I want to be able to share my love of books with children. I want to be able to um, release my children's book and talk about my children's book in future. However, I don't need 3,000 Mary Whitehouses in America telling me what is and what isn't suitable for a child. Can we... Once again, let's talk about my childhood in terms of, if you remember, earlier this year I was reading some horror fiction and I'd seen horror films before that were definitely way above what I as a child should have been watching, but my parents had always been the thing, well, they're here... We're watching it, so they're watching it. And they never tried to hide anything, which, you know, maybe to my detriment, as we know, I'm a very sarcastic, pessimistic person nowadays. But I really just think that that's the soul that ended up inhabiting this filthy shell I call a body. <sighs> Either way, as I mentioned in Will of Bald Book Geek's video, it is a parent's responsibility to look at what their child is watching and decide whether it's appropriate for their child to watch. I, as a creator, shouldn't have to be doing that. I should not have to figure out what is right for your child and what isn't. Like, just be a parent. And these people in America, I'm pretty sure they're just thinking, oh, these they don't understand YouTube. I'm, don't You know, FTC, whatever they are. We all saw the Family Guy song about them years ago. Um, And I can't help but feel like it is all these people that are like, oh, they're always looking at their devices. Well, what am I going to do? Well, you know, nobody's playing tic-tac-toe anymore. I think what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to. We are going to have to make them pay money. They're going to have to pay the money 
if they want to upload videos that aren't suitable for my grandchild. If it ain't Barney and Friends, I don't want to hear about it. Sorry for the very um, possibly racist accent there. I don't flame now. I do not care. I do not care enough is the problem. Like, immediately as I found out this whole thing about YouTube and the possible thing of children and all that fun stuff, it's probably all ended by now. It's I've been away that long, but I just want to get all these thoughts off my chest. As soon as I found that out, and again, mentioned it in Will's video, I just thought, well, that's fine then. I just delete my videos and I'll become a podcast because we all know they're going to die a death soon and I always seem to enter a platform as it's about to die. <sighs> it's happened all the time. If there's a huge fandom for a TV show, then usually if I become involved in watching that show, it gets cancelled that year. It's who I am. I have the touch of cancellation. <sighs> So, as I mentioned, haven't actually read anything in about three weeks. The last thing I read was The Boy in the Dress by David Williams, and that was the day I was reading all that Roald Dahl. I started The Girl Who Speaks Bear that day, and it has been a fortnight, and I haven't got further than 100 pages then. Um, my dad had an appointment this week, so I started reading a Terry Deary book, and I got 50 pages and start thought I'd continue it at home, and I didn't. I just don't want to. I, I don't... I, I found this happen um, at this time every year. Throughout autumn and winter, these last two months of the year, as things get busier at work, as I reach the approach to Christmas, my wish to read more um, disappears and I want to be watching the Christmas movies, I want to be just watching television in general and that's what I've been doing. I finally watched Murder on the Blackpool Express and I have had that recorded on my com not my computer, I've had that recorded for two years now and saved and it was disappointing. Um, also... Yeah, I don't need a haircut. You don't need to tell me. I guessed who the killer was, and I just don't think that it was a very good spoof on the cosy crime genre. Death on the time. Someone didn't even get killed until an hour in, and it's only an hour and a half if you remove the adverts. So, yeah. I just watch weird, crappy TV, and I'm okay with that. And I don't care whether you care or not really um youtube i haven't had the wherewithal about me to watch all of the booktube videos and i felt bad about it and then i thought well i know that not everyone watches my videos all of the time so why should i feel bad as a creator for some people not you know for me not watching their videos when sometimes they can't watch all of mine it's the way the world works there are so many of us we're not all going to be able to watch all each of each other's videos all of the time Saying that, if you have a video you're particularly proud of and you want me to watch, leave a link in the comments. I might get to it at some point. Have we talked about what I have been up to whilst I haven't been here? Because apart from watching television and not reading, um, I also decided to cut 6,000 words out of the final Doris book, which was not an easy decision to make, but... I, I can tell you this because it's definitely being removed. So this next book, I be, the end of the first chapter really had this scene where Do Harold got called to this hotel because Doris had had a funny turn and then they're at the hospital and there's this big revelation about what's been going on in Partridge and Mews whilst they've been away on their cruise. And uh, it didn't work. It's was very reminiscent of what happens in the beginning of Indisputably Doris when Doris falls off a ladder and they go to the hospital and it's all been part of Doris's plan and it was just linking back to that and I didn't like it and I didn't like the way the information was being told to the reader. It felt very much like we were hearing everything secondhand and I very much wanted that part of the story to be seen firsthand and I wanted that terror and so I cut 6,000 words because I was way into writing the second chapter and doing more revelations bringing back old characters that you might have missed as it is the final Doris book I am trying to tie things up as I go along so I tied up a few loose ends from Indisputably Doris in the first chapter and 
as I write, certain things feel... As I write, certain things feel like an ending. And I am okay with that. Each time something happens and it feels like I've drawn a line under it, I get this wave of relief. Because... I adore these characters, I adore this story, I fear, as has been mentioned, that the story might be getting easy for me to write, I might be becoming a bit complacent with it, and I never want that with my writing. I don't want it to seem easy, I can write very fast when I get into the head of a character and the voice of a character. It's what happened with an heir to murder. But I do think it's time, after nearly nine years of writing, to call Doris's story to an end. Next year, 2020 or 2020, whatever your preference, will mark five years since I released Our Doris. And I think that I'd like to get this book finished and released in the year. Just because it'll feel like a nice final end to this story. Um... Also... I'm just going back and forth between things that have happened. One, I was quite happy, just to say, that Alice Chater got a video with Iggy Azalea and they released their song Lola because I feel like it means Alice Chater's going to be getting more recognition from the musical fans across the world and I really hope that that happens because I'm quite a fan of their music. And also my sister decided to take us to see Frozen 2 this week. And if anybody knows me, they know that I wasn't the biggest fan of Frozen, but my sister loves that film. And she came into the living room at ten past seven on Tuesday and said, I have booked us ticket I've booked three tickets to see Frozen Two at cinema at eight o'clock. And that's only about five minutes drive. So I drove us. First time my sister's been in a car with me and she ended the journey by saying, Well, we didn't die and I said, Well, that's what I say to myself at the end of every journey, so okay. <sighs> Frozen 2. Disney film. <sighs> Loads of people have been telling me they were disappointed by this film, but honestly, I was not. The reason Frozen was ruined for me was because I was on Tumblr back in the day when that film came out, and so every single twist and turn had been spoiled for me, and I knew nothing about this film going into it. Sure, I don't think the songs are as catchy, I and mean, it spends a lot of time telling the story through the songs, but then I also thought that that meant that the film would translate to stage really well. And also a lot of the music reminded me of 80s power ballads. Christoph had a Brian Adams East 17 moment in the middle where he was singing song, was it Lost in the Woods or something? My mother cried at one point. It isn't the best film by any estimation. But for something to watch with the family at Christmas, I think it does its job. Another good thing that has happened is that my friend Margaret Holbrook invited me to be the guest speaker at an open mic this Wednesday. So I ended up with quite the busy week. Um, December's always my busiest month. It's when people seem to want writers and I kind of jump at every opportunity in December because I have a few Christmas stories that this is the only time of year I get to read them. Also, I really need to sell some of those copies of Doris Ahoy that I just have sitting around. Remember, books make good Christmas presents. And so, yeah, on Tuesday, well, this is my week, basically. Vlogmas starts tomorrow. That is the 1st of December. We're all aware of that, aren't we? Anyway, so I usually do that. Hopefully, I don't crack my head open this year and end up having to stop the video recording process midway. Um... So Monday I'm working 9 till 5, Tuesday is Christmas Fest, so whilst I wouldn't ordinarily be in work, I will be in work, I'm not sure how long, um, but I will definitely be there till 10 in the evening, I just don't know what time I'm getting there. Then 
Wednesday, I might be meeting my cousin, and he wants to buy a copy of Doris Ahoy. Great stuff. But that could also be happening on Thursday. I don't know. But that's the day I will be going to the Petersgate Tap in Stockport and reading from our Doris, indisputably Doris and Doris Ahoy. I did consider doing something from An Heir to Murder, but considering I don't have much time, I think that that will be why I stick with the Doris books. Thursday seems like a nice day to do nothing before Friday and Saturday when I'm back in work. Sunday off and then we go into another week of work and readings and all that fun stuff. <sighs> and honestly, I am thrilled at the prospect. I like December for that. I like the not reading in December and how it's just filled with this, for me anyway, this sense of community and family and it's the one time of the year where my customers actually I, I have a lot of chatty customers anyway you know your regulars you get on with you talk you know about their families and stuff and what they're doing outside of coming into your shop but then throughout December suddenly people are saying Merry Christmas and they're wanting to tell you about presents ideas and you're getting involved in that whole thing and I remember um when I was still a teenager and I didn't particularly get on with children, but it was probably my first Christmas of working. And this little girl really wanted a giraffe. And I know from experience, you know, sometimes parents from less priv privileged backgrounds have to shop at charity shops and secondhand stores to get presents. My mother did it and I have no issue with it. And every parent just wants to, you know, if they are celebrating Christmas, wants Christmas to be this big thing for their child. And this little girl really wanted the draft. And so their mother um, brought it over and then asked me to hide it. Uh, so she handed it to me under the proviso that I would hide it so that her daughter would think they hadn't got it. And so I hid this draft and then I had to wait and do this whole thing of just being complicit in this lie that the mother was telling to their child about how they couldn't have it, it was somebody else's. And all the time I've just thought, was that child thrilled on Christmas Day to receive the draft that I hid for them? <sighs> I hope so. It's been nearly 11 years since that happened, so I imagine the child's actually in their late teens now and doesn't even remember the time Charlie hid a draft for them. <sighs> probably won't even know that Charlie had a draft for them because they'll be thinking Santa Claus went and stole the draft from a charity shop. Probably dobbed him into the police. Probably in the witness protection programme now. 150 million elves coming after him. Ugh. Anyway, I am going to disappear because I have sneezes really bad. Need to blow my nose. And all that fun stuff. So... Tell me what you're reading, what you're writing, what you're listening to. What are you watching? How's your few weeks been? What have you been up to? Um, how do you feel about YouTube and all this stuff revolving around children, involving children? <sighs> it's a minefield, but Christmas is coming. We've got the new year to look forward to. The world's gone to shit, so let's celebrate. I hope that you got something out of this video besides sheer boredom. And until next time, that is all.